good afternoon to everybody and uh, welcome to th talks bengaluru uh, we have with us today ma salim special commissioner traffic uh, he will be talking to us or rather to our readers through us on uh, uh, issues concerning of course bengaluru traffic uh, i would say that uh, uh, bengaluru traffic is of course uh, one of the pet peeves of uh, every bangalorean uh, in fact i would say it's uh, well on its way to replacing the weather as the uh, you know conversation opener uh, and a great excuse whenever we are late to any event or any meeting so i think this is a subject that engages us enormously and whether to get angry or make positive suggestions or whatever it is it's right on top our list of uh, subjects of for conversation so um, we have with us mr salim the uh, best person to talk to us about it and uh, i suppose he needs actually no introduction he has been uh, in the middle of many conversations and um, uh, very uh, one would think it's impossible thing to do but in conversations which are not about uh, uh, you know negative things about traffic it's a, there has been ever since he has taken over as special commissioner we have had a lot of interactions a lot of traction on what we can actually do to improve bangalore's traffic Uh, situation which is i think uh, something he has achieved uh, that uh, very few people can take credit for and uh, uh, also mr salim is somebody uh, who is interested in uh, traffic not only as a bureaucrat but also academically he holds a phd in uh, traffic management and uh, uh, he has been credited with many uh, novel initiatives whether it is one way or a safe route to school or several such that uh, if i go on with them i might take uh, i might eat into too much of the actual interaction time so i won't go into all that and uh, i extend a very warm welcome to mr salim on behalf of the hindu and before i hand over uh, for uh, to deepika kesi who is our city editor and aditya bharadwaj who is our deputy city editor to continue the conversation i'd like to say a few words about what this initiative is about uh basically th talks uh, bengaluru is about uh, creating a reader connect creating a platform for uh, the hindu readers to connect with and ask questions to people who are concerned with making decisions related to bengaluru whether it is uh, bureaucrats whether it is politicians or whether it could be any number of people who are thought leaders who have um, who have something to share something to share positively about uh, bengaluru's infrastructure or cultural scenario or whatever it might be going forward we also welcome our readers to offer suggestions on how we can make th talks bengaluru more meaningful and uh, it's a great pleasure to have mr salim with us to at the start of the series so i welcome you sir again and uh, i hope we have a great conversation i should tell you that we have had a barrage of questions from readers i mean more questions than we can possibly handle in one hour so we we have curated the questions in the way we think best you know whatever we think are the most significant questions but we have made a promise to our readers that whatever remaining questions we are not able to handle in the course of the hour we'll be giving them to you so that you can address them in the best way that you think is possible uh, and thanks again for making time for us in the midst of your absolutely packed schedule and i welcome you aboard sir thank you thank you ma'am thank you very much rafan sir uh, so i'm deepika the city editor for bengaluru and with me will be aditya the uh, deputy city editor uh, we will be taking in as many questions as we can we've compiled a few from uh, uh, what we received over email and via twitter and uh, we'll also be uh, taking a few, few questions live so and like our, uh, our resident editor bagishri has said um if towards the end if we run out of time we will be handing over the rest of the questions to you some of them are very uh, micro level area specific questions 
Uh, so without any further ado, sir, we'll start off with the first question. This is one of the first things that you uh, announced uh, when you took over. Uh, Emily Krishna Kumar, um, one of our readers, has tweeted to us asking about the school bus menace in the CBD. And uh, some other readers have also reached out about, you know, schools mushrooming in, um, mushrooming in residential areas and thereby causing traffic uh, problems. Uh, what is the BTP doing to resolve this, sir? Well, uh, uh, schools, uh, we have about uh, around 2,800 schools uh, in Bangalore City. And uh, schools uh, uh, should be in residential areas only because generally in the children uh, who are residing uh, close to the schools, uh, they can attend the schools uh, very conveniently, very easily without uh, the need for uh, the transportation. Um, because ideally, uh, the schools should be very, very near to the uh, residential areas and uh, children should walk to the school uh, in a very safe manner. That is uh, the normally, uh, any ideal uh, uh, situation I can say as far as the traffic management is concerned. Um, now, but still uh, we have uh, many schools which are in the CBD areas, uh, uh, many prestigious schools and very old schools. And um, generally parents uh, like their children to study in those schools. That is why uh, from one area to another area, children travel and there is a need for transportation. And uh, because of that, uh, we have, uh, we see a lot of uh, traffic uh, congestion, traffic problems in the CBD area and also some other areas also now, uh, whenever school opening and closing uh, hours are there. Uh, so in fact, uh, this is not a new problem, it was a very, very old problem. In fact, way back uh, in 2005, we had started the Safe Routes to School uh, project, wherein we had selected the uh, key 16 schools where traffic uh, some problem was more. And then uh, some interventions uh, were done at that time. In fact, uh, it was a collaborative approach uh, uh, with the education department, uh, BBMP and BMTC, along with the school authorities. Um, at that time, uh, we had uh, requested all schools to start before 8.30. All schools can start before 8.30 and uh, uh, school can close before 3 o'clock. So the segregation of traffic takes place uh, uh, of school traffic and peak traffic. And secondly, the usage of uh, public transport, uh, because uh, generally uh, children, uh, if they travel in a bus or in a school van, then uh, uh, that much traffic problem will be less. Uh, 50 children coming in a bus will uh, reduce 50 cars on the road. So that is the reason why we had uh, envisaged uh, that uh, safe route to school project uh, under the project that uh, children should, should um, come more and more in uh, public uh, transport. And BMTC at that time had offered uh, school specific buses also, and almost 200 buses were given uh, for schools uh, to commute uh, the children. It was a very successful project and uh, we want to uh, actually revive those project and uh, not only for the uh, CBD area, but uh, for the all schools uh, in Bangalore city. That is now, now we have started some preliminary surveys now of uh, details of uh, schools, how um, children are coming and how many children are there. And also uh, what is the mode of transport, uh, how children are coming and, uh, and uh, if there is any um, large number of uh, uh, private vehicles coming. And then if there is any space available within the school, uh, so that those um, vehicles can use the school space itself, not uh, the uh, ro roads outside the schools. So this uh, we are going to uh, take up uh, uh, in a big way in the sense of the revival of that SRTS uh, in near future. Once all these surveys and other things are conducted and then we will have meetings with the, all the other stakeholders and then come up with a suitable plan at least by next academic year uh, so that uh, we will be able to uh, reduce traffic congestion around schools and also ensure greater safety for school children. Uh, I'm, I think it's not audible. Mr. Aditya is not audible. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, am I audible now? Sir? I, I, you're audible now. Sir, this question is from Vishal Soda. He is asking about the old pair, traffic congestion in old pet area. I know this is a legacy problem of narrow roads, but he has also expressed concern that the business in the old pet area, the wholesale market itself is falling due to lack of parking facilities and traffic congestion. People are not willing to come and brave the old pet area. So are there any plans to uh, reduce traffic congestion and ease traffic flow and provide parking facilities in the pet areas? Even SP road. 
and old, uh, commercial street the old uh, uh, city areas particularly the city what we call city market area around city market is called the pet uh, area uh, it is a typical typical to any, any old city in uh, india uh, if you see in delhi also we have what old delhi uh, similar uh, uh, areas are there Uh, in hyderabad also in mumbai also chennai also we have got old uh, city areas uh, where uh, you know um, uh, these areas have very narrow roads because at that time there were no vehicular traffic when these uh, uh, areas were there uh, so that is the reason why uh, the, uh, the roads are generally very very narrow and uh, at the same time uh, there are heavy footfalls uh, compared to any other area the footfalls are very very heavy uh, in those areas because of the traditional uh, uh, markets being there Uh, but now government had taken lot of initiatives uh, to shift uh, many uh, markets particularly the vegetable market the fruit market uh, they have all been shifted now out of the city in fact even the tarbu pete uh, where uh, the wholesale dinsi uh, that is uh, uh, kirana sh- uh, sh- shops used to be there that also uh, have gone to rmc out little outside the city first initially in eshwantpura area then now again it has gone to dasanpura so uh, now it is um, uh, slowly it is uh, going out the wholesale markets are going out but still there are many uh, um, many uh, trading establishments are there uh, in the form of uh, retail as well as uh, some wholesale which are there in the old pet area it right? starts from say town hall that is uh, jc road uh, corporation circle uh, or, or hudson circle right up to majestic area all these uh, uh, pet areas are there so traffic management is a big challenge there do a uh, lot of regulation we have done in fact uh, heavy vehicles are not allowed in uh, those uh, lanes and by lanes only small vehicles are allowed and also we have uh, uh, certain restrictions uh, uh, like particularly now that avenue road uh, is getting uh, tuned up now in fact a uh, lot of uh, work is happening in uh, avenue road to make the road uh, into a good uh, class road in the sense in the form of um, the since it is taken up under smart city uh, roads so once these uh, works are completed i think um, we will have better uh, i can say flow traffic flow in those areas and also uh, parking is a major issue in these areas parking uh, is a major issue and uh, we have to um, go for a comprehensive parking policy in those areas because most of the roads are free parking there is a reason why haphazard parking happens so the dult uh, dult which has prepared the comprehensive parking policy for the entire city has uh, uh, similar uh, this thing for the pet areas also so if these uh, parking policies are implemented i think uh, we can have a reasonably better traffic flow but uh, in um, cantonment area uh, areas like commercial street for example or brigade road the parking is quite uh, well taken care of in the sense it is all paid parking and uh, it is uh, well managed well organized also uh, by bbmp so these areas uh, don't have that much uh, traffic uh, congestion or traffic problem uh, compared to the old uh, pet areas so to take forward uh, this parking issue uh, i'm going there there were a lot of questions regarding parking actually uh, one was from uh, patendur agrahara itpl in whitefield where uh, they were asking about how commercial shops construction debris you know all sorts of uh, uh, civic issues coming into play when it, when uh, it comes to parking uh, which is basically eating up into parking space that is one uh, issue that people have uh, pointed out um second there is rebello anil who's asked us if uh, btp will work with the bbmp to identify illegal buildings which have sublet uh, say their basements or parking areas uh, as commercial spaces based thereby not allowing vehicles to park there and then the vehicles spilling over to the roads that is one question that someone has asked uh there is also jp nagar and uh, rwa and um, uh, there are many queries uh, related to this audit of uh, traffic signage installations so three uh, part questions basically parking in residential areas and probably outer areas as well uh second is about uh, traffic signage installations and third is illegal i mean buildings basically illegally letting out uh, parking spaces for other commercial uh, activities well uh, sir one minute there is a related question sir one nidhi jaiswal a reader has asked she was pa- fined for no parking in a place where there was no parking sign there was no no parking sign so there is a always a confusion whether unless there is a parking sign it is parking and even if there is no no parking sign is it no parking across the streets 
well uh, let me first uh, uh, answer the question regarding uh, the um, basements uh, which are being let out uh, uh, for uh, uh, parking uh, not for parking but for commercial usages in fact some time back uh, i think uh, i remember uh, uh, traffic police had uh, conducted a survey and uh, given the details of uh, uh, properties where uh, such violations have were happening uh, to bbmp since it it is a violation of uh, the bylaws because uh, uh, whenever there is a uh, parking facility provided in any building it has to be used only for parking purposes only as per the uh, bbmp bylaws uh, it is a violation of the uh, web bylaw and where bbmp has to take action i think lot of action was initiated at the time when notices were given and subsequently i am not very sure what has happened but again i think we should uh, go back for such surveys again though directly we don't have a jurisdiction uh, over uh, this matter uh, but uh, we can assist bbmp in uh, um, locating or identifying uh, these uh, locations where uh, such violations are happening now coming to second uh, question regarding the uh, parking and no parking uh, uh, signages in fact uh, if you see the uh, rules of road regulation and uh, traffic control act uh, generally a particular road is uh, declared as uh, no parking area but in bangalore city all arterial roads are no parking areas only like for example this tumkur road for example the entire tumkur road uh, stretch of tumkur road is no parking and uh, now that we cannot have uh, no parking board at every meter or every feet we cannot have but uh, since it is notified uh, no parking zone the entire road so it is um, it, it has to be no parking only in entire area so nobody can park there uh, similarly in uh, residential areas uh, parking has been provided uh, in most of the places there also there is no parking signages are not be there because residential areas generally since it is a residents uh, uh, only are uh, staying there so they park uh, their vehicles there there is no violation of that but of course in certain arterial roads and sometimes of arterial roads and certain collector streets there are both mix uh, mixes there parking roads are also there no parking uh, uh, roads are also there in such places you know in convenient places we give uh, uh, we place the no parking signages so uh, and again i have uh, as i have mentioned uh, these notifications are there and not, and everybody knows these notifications and notified areas are there so there uh, you know every fit or every meter we cannot have no parking uh, signage or no parking board and now we in the recent uh, um, no parking signages we are mentioning even the distance also 50 meters 100 meters like that so in future we are going to make that an entire uh, road uh, if it is uh, no parking then we will mention very clearly that entire road is a no parking road and secondly if there is a small stretch only which is no parking uh, in many places like for example uh, uh, sjp road for example there is uh, left side there is a parking is provided and right side it is uh, no parking so similar uh, you know we can have a signage appropriately placed in uh, such a manner but as far as residential areas are concerned since residential areas we don't have um, no parking uh, regulations to a large extent so it is generally considered as parking areas only and for the residents only but of late recently we are seeing in uh, some residential areas some taxis and some uh, cabs they are coming and parking there because they are not getting available parking space in other places so they are coming and trying to park there so in such places we are trying to regulate in the sense uh, Uh, in in fact rws uh, we are working very closely with them recently in our traffic forum meetings we mentioned that you know there should be a mechanism for residential areas where we can give one entry and one exit that that only that happens only when all the residents uh, agree uh, that entire locality can have few or one or two only entries or one or two only exits that will help uh, uh, this residents to you know enjoy a peaceful uh, life in, inside the residential area i am not bothered by all these uh, other uh, commercial vehicles coming and parking there and coming to third question regarding audit of uh, traffic signages yes uh, we are having uh, uh, in fact uh, every year uh, uh, we are installing about 6 to 7000 boards across the city not only the parking boards but also all uh, type of signages the mandatory the cautionary and uh, the informative signages across the city and uh, these have a shelf life also uh for uh, for three years so once three years generally what happens we replace those boards uh so just to finish off with the parking questions uh the other big question that everyone has wanted to ask uh since probably several months is whether towing is com- uh, making a comeback in the city uh is 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 that on the cards sir 
right now we don't have any uh, thoughts about uh, towing vehicles uh, because uh, uh, we have uh, in the law itself uh, certain stringent measures are there for example uh, we have 283 ipc uh, which is uh, um, a regular uh, fire case wherein we uh, book uh, uh, cases of uh, uh, footpath parking and footpath riding because these we consider both footpath parking as and uh, footpath uh, uh, riding to be very very undesirable uh, uncivilized behavior so that is the reason why instead of towing the vehicles or fining them we are going for regular case regular ipc case against uh, the vehicle uh, so that the regular fire is uh, made and then the vehicle is seized and it is uh, subjected to court uh, process and only the owner of the vehicle has to get it released uh, get the vehicle released from court only so these uh, measures we have started now in fact we have booked almost 3000 cases in the last couple of months so i think um, that uh, i think a lot of discipline uh, we are expecting that a lot of discipline will come uh, on the roads hi sir yeah. okay the next one of the major other issues is about pedestrian safety sir there have been many questions about pedestrian safety so uh, one of the readers ma ravinder has asked whether you are identifying any new pedestrian crossing zones in whitefield especially now that namo metro work is also happening and there are concerns about pedestrian safety and also what are the generally what are the measures you are taking for pedestrian safety sir Kochu Shankar and many others have also asked these questions. Well, uh, mm, earlier times, say a decade earlier, uh, uh, Bangalore roads were not very safe uh, for pedestrians. But today, if you see the roads uh, are so good, in a sense, uh, particularly if you see the uh, smart city uh, roads, which are being you now coming across the city, and also the earlier version, the um, Uh, tender shore roads uh, the footpaths have been built very well now it is well maintained also well well built and well maintained so a lot of good uh, pedestrian uh, uh, footpaths are available now for uh, people to walk and uh, secondly uh, the bbmp also has constructed many skywalks in uh, most of the congested areas if you see today are where one way system is uh, there uh, most of these places we have got good uh, uh, skywalk including with uh, Uh, elevators also including with the, um, these uh, lifts also so that uh, is actually in fact uh, helping uh, the uh, cause of pedestrian safety and secondly in um, city market area we have got good subway system which was not much used earlier but now we are uh, since last about 15 days uh, we are uh, making a use of that uh, subway very well in fact all pedestrians are now being sent uh, through uh, pedestrian subway only which is uh, well lit and well maintained also by bbmp so now i, I think pedestrian safety has been uh, taken care of well i can say as far as bangalore city is concerned Uh, as far as uh, white field is uh, is there uh, white field uh, we have uh, almost uh, bbmp uh, bmrcl work is almost complete now uh, the the uh, the, uh, the civil work which are going on it has been completed now and uh, there a lot of uh, uh, work is happening uh, uh, to ensure that uh, pedestrians have a safe movement uh, particularly when the metro train starts uh, maybe in mid march when the uh, the metro train starts Uh, even uh, the metro has uh, plans to even start uh, auto services also there and to ensure that the proper footpaths are also made uh, wherever uh, uh, there is a short uh, walkable distance is there in uh, whitefield area i think overall i can say today bangalore city has uh, good pedestrian facilities uh, another, another question yeah go on aditya uh, another related not, question sir people can sir aditya here sir. Huh, another yeah. related question sir hmm. another reader vivek ayer has asked about uh, your opinion on pedestrianization during weekends or pedestrianization of market areas like gandhi bazar there is a proposal avenue road there was a proposal once so church street they tried it out during weekends but now it is not happening so does this promote public transport pedestrianization and do you have more plans for any such area sir in the city well only few roads in bangalore uh, which uh, we can think of as pedestrianized uh, zones uh, kaban park is already all roads uh, are pedestrianized uh, in weekends in the sense in the general holidays wherever 
general holidays are there. Uh, generally, uh, it is pedestrian only, or uh, for uh, uh, walkers, it has been uh, left. Entire roads are left there. Uh, similarly, only few roads, say for example, uh, as we have mentioned, Church Street, Commercial Street, uh, uh, are the two in the uh, Kant area, and uh, Gandhi Bazaar maybe. Because again, Gandhi Bazaar is uh, some sort of a subarterial road. I can say so sometimes it is also a connecting road to from one place to another place. Uh, uh, the only road uh, we, I, which I see total pedestrianization is uh, Brigade Road on uh, 31st night. Uh, that was December. Generally, it is converted as a pedestrian zone and that to one way pedestrian zone. Okay, only one, one way only is pedestrians have to walk. Uh, that is the only few roads available uh, in the city which uh, can be uh, think, uh, can be thought of as pedestrian zones. But again, it is uh, with the commercial association of uh, or the commercial establishment association of those roads uh, as well as BBMP have to take a call on that. Uh, another pet peeve uh, of Bengalurians is probably auto fares and auto rickshaws not flying to where they want. The one and a half <laughs> meme is very famous in the city. Uh, Sujit has uh, asked on Twitter, uh, what will the BTP do to resolve the auto rickshaw menace? He specifically asked this question. <laughs> Well, auto rickshaw is one of the important intermediate public transport in the city. And uh, it is uh, uh, one of the good services, I can say, uh, as far as uh, the city commuting is concerned. Um, and we want auto rickshaw to be good in the sense, uh, if the service is good, generally, you know, it helps in uh, reducing traffic congestion. Because people will travel in auto rickshaw, they will not bring their own vehicles, own cars or two wheelers. So that uh, definitely help uh, in uh, decongesting uh, the city. And uh, that is the reason why we are uh, trying to ensure that uh, the auto service becomes good. In fact, uh, any complaint against uh, auto rickshaw harassment, for example, uh, we have a special helpline also for uh, any auto rickshaw uh, complaints are there, for example, overcharging or refusing to go on hire. Uh, so we have uh, generally we book cases uh, for such complaints and the special number has been given by BTP uh, to send even WhatsApp messages also uh, against uh, uh, auto complaints. Along with that, we are also uh, reviving back uh, the prepaid uh, or prefixed auto stands which we had earlier. Uh, we had, in fact, we had about sixteen uh, prefixed auto stands in the city. Uh, but if, uh, because of uh, COVID, uh, uh, they were all shut down and subsequently uh, they were not opened. Now we are uh, again opening back. In fact, we have already started three uh, prefixed auto stands in NG uh, Road and Kempegowda uh, bus terminal as well as uh, uh, in uh, Sampiki Road also. Now we are uh, reviving the, all the 16, plus uh, we, uh, Metro uh, BMRCL also is planning about the six places uh, pre-fixed auto stands. So this will definitely help uh, the uh, passengers, particularly people who are um, uh, using auto rickshaws and uh, uh, particularly generally auto rickshaws are used in, mostly in commercial areas, uh, bus stands and uh, near hospitals. So these places we are focusing. Uh, so that um, you know, people get a good uh, auto service. Once the auto service is good, then automatically it helps in uh, decongestion of the city. Sir uh, Sanjay G H from Hagadur has asked that there are no traffic signals yet at all the major junctions, especially in the outskirts of the city, in the new outer zones. So, are there any plans to introduce more traffic signals, sir, in the city, especially in the outer zones? Well, we are going to have uh, some more uh, traffic signals, particularly in the outskirts areas. Um, because, uh, for example, uh, many areas which were hitherto uh, rural areas, which have now become developed and become suburban areas. And also, is uh, some, some areas have even become part of BBMP also. So these areas now we are focusing, for example, in uh, uh, Sajapur Road, for example, uh, we want to have uh, uh, at least minimum two more traffic signal lights at the junctions. Uh, similarly, in other uh, areas of outskirts of the city, uh, whether it is uh, uh, towards um, Bagalgunte area, that's Hesterita Road, or whether it is in uh, um, Magdi Road area, or Mysore Road, uh, Kumbalgudu area, or uh, this side in the south, uh, beyond J.P. Nagar and uh, beyond Saraki. Uh, there are many new uh, areas which have come up where traffic uh, is, uh, has increased to a large extent. So these areas will be focusing uh, in the near future.
Uh, so staying with public transport, um, there have been questions from uh, Nips Malikarjun, Yogesh Prabhu Swami. Uh, Yogesh Prabhu Swami wants to know when bus priority lanes will be implemented in 12 high density corridors. What is this? Uh, what is the status right now? Because there were plans, um, they were introduced in ORR, but we saw implementation falter during COVID. That is one aspect. Uh, bus uh, priority lane. Second, uh, Nits Malikarjan is asking uh, how to stop, how to move bus stops away from major junctions because that's leading to some congestion. Well, uh, this is a very uh, good question. In fact, uh, uh, bus priority lane uh, was started between uh, Silkboard Junction uh, to have all flyover. Uh, but now, because since uh, the uh, BMRCL work uh, has started there, uh, that is the reason why now we don't have. Uh, that has been shelved for the time being because uh, one and a half lane has been taken over the east side by uh, for metro construction. So once metro construction is completed, then I think we'll restore it back. Uh, metro complemented by the bus priority lane will definitely help in boosting the public transport. In fact, uh, public trans uh, one of the major problem uh, in, of uh, traffic congestion in Bangalore city is uh, slow growth or uh, lack of adequate in public transport only because uh, people uh, have to travel in their own personal vehicles. Unlike in Mumbai, if you see, uh, where uh, uh, almost 82% of the people travel in public transport, uh, thanks to good commuter rail network, uh, and also base the city being a linear city. Uh, here, uh, uh, we don't have that uh, system, but since uh, now a uh, lot of uh, uh, initiatives have been taken uh, by government, particularly uh, the metro, the phase two, phase two A, two B, Phase three. These are all being work is going on now. I think within a couple of years, these works will be completed and we'll have a good uh, uh, mass transit facility. Along with that, we have we are also getting the uh, suburban rail uh, network also. That also will help in boosting the uh, public transport. And uh, with BMTC already there and other ITPs, I think uh, we'll see uh, the model share may uh, jump from forty five percent. Uh, public transport in Bangalore to almost to 70-75 percent, which is quite a satisfactory level, I can say. Maybe in a couple of years or two, three years, we can have a good public transport uh, uh, network, and that will definitely help uh, in reducing congestion. Uh, I can say to a very, very optimal extent. Uh, so, just staying with that question, one problem that a lot of uh, uh, citizens have pointed out is the lack of integration between the various modes of transport. Someone wants to take, say, a BMTC bus uh, to the metro station, but while coming back, they'd have an issue because uh, many areas are not serviced by the BMTC for 24 hours. Um, would the BTP be uh, coordinating with the multiple agencies, BMRCL, BMTC, to sort of start integration of various modes of transport, sir? Because Bengaluru, like you mentioned, has expanded beyond uh, earlier limits. So um, uh, what about servicing those outer areas where there is no metro and probably not um, as uh, efficient a BMTC system as they would be in the city? Well, uh, traffic management uh, has many stakeholders uh, and coordination uh, between these stakeholders is uh, very, very essential. In fact, today we have got a very good coordination. In fact, uh, the traffic management uh, is the priority of the government. Uh, in Bangalore city. That is the reason why uh, now we have got good coordination. Uh, even that uh, coordination meeting is uh, chaired by a very, very uh, senior level, the chief secretary herself. So that way, uh, good coordination is happening between uh, BBMP and uh, Bangalore Traffic Police, as well as uh, with other agencies also. Uh, as far as uh, uh, BMTC uh, buses are concerned, uh, we have uh, good, good coordination. In fact, uh, um, some of our officers, uh, police officers have worked in KSRTC and BMTC. So because of that, uh, we have good coordination. And um, bus stops, again, uh, is one of the major issue uh, which has been raised by some of the citizens. Uh, many places it is it is uh, happening where bus stops are very close to junctions. Now, which we are now uh, actually uh, um, relocating it to what hundred meters away from either before the junction or after the junction. And one of the method what we are doing is we are sending the people there because no problem is generally people come and stand in some place and bus also stops there. So instead of, you know, regulating things, we are just sending the people only to the designated place now. So that will definitely help in reducing congestion. And as far as the need for bus services, wherever such requests are coming, we are passing on to the BMTC authorities.
Sir, another follow-up question to the bus and public transport, sir. Many activists have pointed out that uh, actually the bus travel in Bangalore comparative to other cities is actually more prohibitive price-wise. And many of the poorer sections of the society, like for example, the garment workers, don't even are not even able to afford BMTC. So because to increase the uh, share of public transport in the city from traffic police, do you uh, plan to recommend for slashing of prices, sir? Well, no, this is <laughs> that, a is, that is a call to be taken by BMTC. I think uh, we have a lot of recommendations done earlier. So uh, we will have a discussion with them. But uh, right now, uh, it is uh, the call that BMTC has to take. So going to the next question. Many people, many of our readers have flagged issues about two-wheeler riders actually violating more traffic norms. So are there any plans to actually uh, create awareness among two-wheelers, especially regarding lane discipline, footpath riding? And also there is one question from uh, Deepak GC. He has asked whether is it possible to uh, ban two-wheelers on the electronic city flyover? Well, uh, we have 70% of our total vehicles in Bangalore city is two-wheelers only. And also, it is a very convenient uh, mode of transport um, for uh, um, generally for large sections of society. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, one of the major uh, uh, problem of, uh, for two-wheelers is uh, the lack of uh, lane discipline. Uh, which is very, very, so many times causes uh, uh, strong safety issues. And also many times it uh, uh, leads to congestion also. For example, uh, lane discipline, we have two types of lane discipline. One is uh, the direction oriented and third, second one is the speed oriented lane discipline. Now, as far as uh, direction oriented lane discipline is concerned, you are supposed to drive in, in a lane only. And if you are taking a right turn, you have to be in the right lane. And if you are in the left lane, uh, turning left, you have to be in the left lane. Or uh, if you are going straight, you have to be in the center lane. That is uh, the direction oriented lane discipline. Many of the uh, two wheelers uh, do not follow that and they go zigzag. And uh, at the junction, uh, sometimes they try to swerve from right to left and left to right, which causes uh, you know delay. I can say which causes uh, little congestion and also the release of vehicles. Are, I mean, the green cycle is there. It doesn't happen. The release of vehicles should have happened. For example, uh, in a X number of vehicles to be released uh, whenever a green cycle comes, that much uh, uh, vehicles will not get released. It will become X minus uh, Y, X, R, X minus Z. So that many vehicles only we can go. So that uh, leads to congestion. And secondly, it is also leads to, uh, can say, road accidents also. Uh, because accidents happen because uh, if you are not following the lane discipline, uh, generally, uh, in the particularly stretches of road where there is a long stretch is there, then uh, it uh, seriously it, hel- it uh, hampers safety. Coming to the uh, speed oriented lane discipline, all the uh, slow moving vehicles have to uh, go on the left. That is, uh, uh, it has to be followed, but um, we can see many of uh, vehicles, not only two wheelers, many vehicles are not uh, um, uh, adhering to this norm. Uh, particularly if you see in the highways, the trucks uh, go on the right lane. Okay, uh, they are supposed to be on the left lane because they are slow moving vehicle. Uh, only cars uh, which have been given 80 km speed uh, speed limit has been given for them. They have to be on the right lane. But unfortunately, what happens because of um, uh, I can say lack of awareness, uh, this speed oriented lane discipline is also not followed. So it is very important that you know we should inculcate more and more uh, lane discipline, both the speed as well as uh, direction oriented. Uh, so that you know smooth flow of traffic uh, as well as safe uh, flow of traffic uh, happens now coming to the you know, riding and footpath or uh, parking and footpath it is a totally unacceptable behavior totally undesirable unacceptable behavior that is the reason why we are not uh, booking them under motor vehicle act cases so there is an mv act cases we are not booking we are going straight away uh, and uh, booking cases under ipc indian penal code Uh, staying with enforcement, sir, um, Sagar Koturwar has asked, why are cops still checking documents even after the DJP orders? This is one aspect to it. And the second is enforcement uh, why, sir, we've, uh, you know, every time the police has come up with, say, uh, in raising tech, for example, violators have gone one step ahead trying to cover, uh, say, their number plates or half cover them. Um, enforcement wise, how are the police keeping up with violators and like various forms of violations that, that are coming into play right now uh, is the second half of the question. 
Well, uh, as far as uh, violation of traffic rules are, or I can say, booking of uh, uh, against uh, traffic violators, uh, we are now uh, uh, actually go, uh, using uh, uh, technology in a very, very big, big way. Uh, because technology is um, so good now that uh, you know you need not uh, stand on the road and flag vehicles. There is uh, there is no need. In fact, uh, that is the reason why slowly, slowly we are going to uh, uh, ensure that uh, the physical checking of uh, vehicles on the road or flagging of vehicles on the road should come down. Uh, and uh, now, in fact, almost now it has come down to almost 25% uh, only now, because 75 percent of the cases uh, now we are looking through online only. Uh, through cameras because we have two different types of cameras one is the surveillance cameras uh, the old surveillance cameras we had about uh, almost 300 cameras uh, where we are booking cases uh, by zooming the violators now on the under safe city project we are having 7500 cameras in fact all, out of that almost 3000 cameras are already up so now we can um, um, in fact uh, we can uh, check uh, the violations uh, um, through cameras very easily Secondly, we have another set of cameras which are called as the enforcement cameras. They are all the ANPR, the automatic number plate recognition cameras and the RLBT cameras, that is red light violation detection cameras, uh, which are also now uh, being uh, uh, almost 330 locations we have got now uh, these cameras installed. So automatically we are capturing the violators now. Uh, whenever whenever there is any violation, automatically we are capturing. In fact, now uh, since uh, uh, the inauguration of ITMS uh, 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 fortnight ago, uh, we are booking almost 30,000 cases every day uh, through online uh, this thing. So that is actually a huge number. In fact, uh, uh, though uh, Bangalore City, uh, we generally book a uh, number of cases booked is very, very large, almost 10 million cases we book every year, which is um, uh, I think highest for any city. Uh, not only in India, I think globally also. I don't think any uh, city books so such a large number of cases. Though it is not a, a very, uh, I can say, good uh, uh, thing, uh, because that it, it also means that you know ten million people are uh, violating the traffic rules. So that is also uh, equally it, it can be said. So that is the reason we now, uh, since uh, the fines have gone up now, and also since uh, you are being watched everywhere, uh, all the cameras are available now. I think uh, the uh, number of cases uh, may go up a little, but ultimately it should come down because once uh, uh, the deterrence starts happening, uh, actually the deterrence happening, then uh, automatically I think uh, cases will come down because there is a system now wherein uh, even the repeat offenders are uh, fined uh, uh, twice, the fine amount becomes twice. So uh, deterrence will become very high. So what we are expecting through technology is that the cases will go up initially. Now we are booking 30,000 cases. We may even go up to 50,000 cases per day. Uh, but eventually it will come down. It will come down and uh, uh, we can see good uh, discipline on roads. Uh, right, so just uh, taking forward that question, uh, two aspects. One is manpower. Uh, you know, for a long time, the police has, uh, we've, we've continuously been writing about how uh, the police are short staffed. Uh, now that the city has grown and uh, the outer areas are sort of, uh, many residents have pointed out how there's a lack of manpower when it comes to uh, policing, uh, either for traffic or for law and order. Uh, one aspect is, you know, how are you sort of uh, catching up with the growth of the city as far as manpower is concerned and two is uh, you have recently opened more police stations or more police station divisions is that going to be expanded to the other parts of the city as well so especially you know uh, the newer areas well uh, as far as manpower uh, is concerned uh, uh, i can say we are uh, reasonably well off i can say um, we have uh, presently 5300 is our sanction strength uh, which is uh, quite uh, reasonable and uh, uh, quite satisfactory as far as the present uh, status is concerned. And uh, in fact, we are uh, uh, the government uh, has uh, already sanctioned four more uh, traffic police stations, particularly in outskirts areas. So these are areas where hitherto uh, traffic policing was uh, not quite adequate, like uh, uh, in the south, uh, one traffic police station has been given. Uh, the, that is uh, Talgatpura. It is called Talgatpura, where you know this is a new areas which have been which have joined the city, and then uh, uh, this Hennur uh, side also we have got one new traffic police station. Mm -hmm. Then um, Belandur and uh, 
uh, and at Mahadevpur also uh, because of the traffic problems there, huge traffic problems. That is why these areas have been chosen for new traffic police stations. And also new traffic subdivisions also are coming now in HSR uh, layout as well as uh, in Vijayanagara in the west. So um, uh, we can say though uh, the volume of uh, traffic is very high and uh, the traffic poli uh, policemen may not uh, commensurate with the no number is not so commensurate. But still, uh, I, I can say we can manage uh, the traffic well. Along with that, um, uh, the shortfalls, uh, whatever we have got, is filled through many other uh, so mechanisms we have got, like the citizens' participation. Uh, we have Traffic Warden Organization, one of the very uh, good volunteer organization, uh, wherein uh, traffic wardens generally spend about 16 hours a month with traffic policemen on the road. And uh, we have almost uh, active 600 people uh, in the traffic warden organization. Plus another 200 now we are they have just enrolled and we have the training everything is completed. So now we are going to have about 800 uh, active traffic uh, wardens uh, on the street. Along with that, um, uh, there are uh, traffic marshals in the form of uh, um, the security people given by the industries associations, particularly the LCTA and um, the ORCA. So these organizations have given us uh, security guards and we have trained them and we are using them as traffic marshals. Along with that, we have public eye also, citizens themselves, you know, as a good enforcement mechanism, they capture violations whenever they see in their residential areas and other places, and they send the images to us uh, for booking cases. So this uh, entire gamut, I can say the citizens participation, uh, plus the citizens forum meetings, uh, wherein citizens come and interact with us and give suggestions and also highlight the problems, uh, uh, traffic problems. Uh, that uh, definitely helps uh, us uh, in uh, managing the traffic uh, in a very, I can say, uh, very effective and efficient manner. And so about the Public Eye app itself, uh, Kamran and Arun Sriram have asked, how about making reporting on Public Eye rewarding with some incentives, like monetary incentives? Is that possible to encourage more reporting? No, this is uh, actually this is not possible because we are we have given this platform particularly for residential areas because generally what happens is traffic policemen are seen on um, main roads, arterial roads and the subarterial roads. But sometimes in residential areas, it's very difficult uh, for traffic policemen to penetrate and uh, um, do uh, uh, I can say enforce traffic laws or traffic rules. Uh, so um, that is the reason why we have given this option to the residents, uh, particularly, for example, if they see any violation right in front of their houses or in, in their streets, uh, and they can just capture and send it across to us. Because many times what happens, a lot of frustration happens. Uh, some people may come and park the vehicle there and they may not move. Sometimes even people may not uh, experience difficulty in commuting in, the, in their own area. So such uh, problems what they have got. Uh, they can just uh, click and then um, as many times we see certain um, bad behavior such as uh, dealing or drag racing and other things uh, which you know generally uh, in, is done in areas where traffic policemen are not there so such uh, uh, things can be captured and that can be sent to us that is the reason why we have given this option but giving monetary this thing is <laughs> i think it is far-fetched uh, it is a voluntary service uh, people should, uh, as a responsible citizen, should because it is a responsibility of every citizen to, you know, uh, report uh, any crime or any uh, behave, bad behavior happening in their area. So, as a part of, uh, I can say, good uh, social behavior, uh, this public eye should be used. Sir, there are a few more questions that have come in regarding parking, sir. One, uh, Pratik Mahapatra has asked about MLCP, sir, multi-level car parking, whether... Uh, the few that are under construction are yet to come up, but many that have already been there, like the one on JC Road are not being used by people actually. That is one question, whether MLCPs, more MLCPs will be built and how to effectively use the existing ones. That is one question. The other is uh, Pradeep Nayar has asked, uh, this uh, odd days and even days parking on either side of the road is many times confusing. And why can't it be one side of the road always? Well, uh, as far as MLC, uh, multi-level car park facilities are concerned, uh, JC Road uh, is being used now. In fact, JC Road, uh, we have banned parking. Uh, entire road is a new parking area. So that uh, is being used now. Even that Maharaja complex uh, parking also is being used because Kempegoda Road also, we have made it totally no parking road. Uh, and also, there are many uh, multi-level car parking facilities provided by BMTC in their bus term, near bus terminals. If you see huge uh, parking uh, lots have been uh, made, like for example, Ashwantpura, if you see, or uh, in Banshantri and uh, even the Blue area, 
a good parking facility has been created so that is being used also and uh, people uh, generally who are in uh, going to the uh, uh, commercial areas around uh, those uh, bus terminals uh, they park their vehicles there of course a lot of uh, not many more have to come particularly in the cbd area we require a lot of uh, multi level car parking facilities because bangalore city the, more than the traffic uh, flow it is the parking problem which is uh, most important and most glaring also in many places you know people just uh, saturdays for example today is a saturday you can come say after 3 o'clock uh, in the uh, city cbd area uh, the roads are uh, you know uh, clogged i can say because uh, number of thing, number one the traffic will be very heavy because people will be are uh, taking their own vehicles uh, for leisure or for uh, shopping or uh, for any other uh, entertainment purposes and secondly parking spaces available are very very limited uh, either in mg road or uh, in brigade road or in commercial street or on nearby areas where parking is available in such places parking facility is very very limited so that is the reason why we need to have a, a good uh, multi level car park facilities in the cbd area uh it is i think uh, the civic agencies uh, should uh, give a thought about this but bmtc has done um, great service i can say you know, wherever their bus terminals have come new bus terminals under jnnuram they have uh, constructed good uh, uh, parking lots which is uh, definitely helping in fact in double road if you see in shantinagar uh, bus stand it is always full the parking lot is always full the mlcp way which is there is al- uh, is almost uh, uh, full i can say every day sir another follow up question you since you spoke about saturday saturday traffic has become notorious especially in the afternoons so any special drive to address the saturday traffic itself more than sunday it is actually saturdays yeah saturday uh, not only in uh, the cbd area but also most of the shopping malls also if you see where the shopping malls are located, located uh, traffic will be huge because that is normally evening uh, is uh, uh, people generally would like to come with their families so since they are coming with their families they try to bring their own uh, car or own vehicle uh, so that is uh, major uh, issue i can say and also uh, since uh, uh, the people are not using public transport because the number of people are coming from the family are more and it works cheaper also if they uh, travel in a car or two wheeler so that is the reason we, we have a huge problem what we from our traffic police uh, side uh, we are mitigating the situation by uh, putting more traffic policemen on the road in fact uh, on uh, saturday uh, every saturday for example uh, generally weekly off are not given Uh, weekly offs are given on sunday and other days not on uh, saturday because saturday we require a lot of policemen and also in areas like uh, say shivaji nagar or uh, kaban park ashok nagar in these uh, police stations uh, even the first shift people also come in this for the second shift also after 4 o'clock after having lunch they come back uh, for duties uh, so generally this practice is being followed uh, for, since, since many years now because uh, we need lot of uh, policemen uh, on the road uh, to regulate uh, the saturday uh, traffic rush so this is how we are trying to manage but at the same time uh, since we are uh, requesting the citizens also to come in public transport particularly auto rickshaw or uh, uber ola uh, these uh, vehicles can be more used so that uh, the need for parking uh, may not be there so uh, the other time the previous question about odd day and even day parking sir that you did well, not odd know. day even day parking in places some places it is there it is all historical things which have been there for a very long time now i think we are lo- we looking on that in most of the places now it is not there if you see in the cbd area we don't have odd day even day this thing it is parking is generally on the left side only now uh, in most of the roads i think remaining uh, roads which are there now uh, i think we will have a relook on that and uh, we will see to it that it is converted as uh, one side parking only uh, on all days i think uh, we should go for that uh, in future wherever uh, they are left out now still some places they are left out i can say but otherwise if you see most of the roads where parking is there today uh, they are uh, the left side parking has been provided yeah so just uh, someone's just tweeted about this that indranagar i think most of these commercialized areas indranagar is particularly pointing out saying there's parking on either side of the road so uh, he's asked for your attention to the to 12th main indranagar specifically well uh, presently we have problem uh, in indranagar because of the uh, road construction work going on the 100 feet road uh, the old madras road a uh, uh, lot of uh, good work is happening uh, where road construction is uh, i think is in final stages now once all these uh, works are completed 
I think uh, we want to go back to the local area traffic management plan. That is what we had for Indra Nagar long back. Uh, it's called LATM for Indra Nagar, uh, where uh, uh, we had uh, even, in fact, done a micro uh, study of uh, all roads, including small streets also. And a uh, proper plan was put in place where parking is provided, where parking is not provided. And, uh, and the movement of uh, traffic also is regulated uh, in a very, very optimal manner. So once these works which are being right now going on, right topping work, once it is completed, I think uh, we will go back to the old uh, uh, local area traffic management plan. In fact, recently I had an interaction with some of the citizens there. Uh, so they are also uh, asking to revive that uh, uh, local area traffic management plan for Indranagar. So we are going to revive it. Sir, one uh, reader, Ajay Gehlot, he has flagged this issue, but uh, this has been flagged by many others also about these heavy construction vehicles like uh, road rollers, cranes, bulldozers, even water tankers causing a huge problem on the roads, especially in residential areas, even on commercial uh, sub-arterial roads. Well, these vehicles uh, we have banned uh, uh, in peak hours, morning peak hour and evening peak hour, they are banned. But since a uh, uh, lot of work is happening, in a sense, particularly if you see BMRCL uh, work is happening uh, in uh, many corridors. In fact, uh, uh, half of the city, I can say, uh, the uh, metro work is going on. And along with that, the, uh, the uh, white topping work uh, are part of smart, smart city roads. Also, uh, BBMP has undertaken many roads. And also, uh, many places... Uh, uh, other uh, road related works are also happening and uh, there is also a need from uh, citizens also for their own construction also their construction of houses and other places so i think these things uh, uh, we, are, we have to permit there is no other way but they are, we are permitting only at the in the non peak hours that is between 11 in the morning to 5 o'clock in the evening and uh, they can use uh, uh, maybe for transportation in the late night uh, after the uh, peak hour completes at 8 o'clock so, but only exception we have given is for uh, BMRCL Metro, uh, wherein uh, many times what happens, the cement mixers, they have, since the work is uh, continuous work, they have to come do uh, some exception we have given to uh, Metro. Sir, one, uh, another question, sir, that uh, many people have flagged this. There is a confusion as to whether service roads are one ways or two ways. Well, service roads generally are two ways, generally, unless it is made one way. Like, for example, now uh, the service roads uh, in uh, outer ring road between, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, from uh, Hebbal flyover uh, till Silk Road, now we have made it one way because uh, since the metro work is going on on the main carriageway and main carriageway, half of the carriageway is not available. So that is why we are using uh, the service roads now. So uh, entire service road we have converted into one way. So similarly, wherever uh, uh, there is a, a, a problem uh, in the main carriageway, then we are converting those uh, service roads as one way. That, that, but generally, it will be a temp temporary measure only till the construction of uh, better work is completed. Uh, we have time for one last question, sir. Kailash has asked, uh, and this is a question that we've been uh, asking for the, for the last couple of months, actually, since the monsoon set in. Uh, how much do bad roads contribute to uh, uh, traffic problems? And what because several instances we've seen the traffic police themselves, oh, so uh, you know, what is what uh, a one part is how badly does it affect traffic uh, movement? And secondly, um, is the BTP coordinating with the BBMP um, beyond actually doing stop cap measurements and actually repairing the roads on the ground? Well, uh, presently we have very good coordination with BBMP and uh, in fact, uh, pothole uh, filling is uh, on a day-to-day -day basis is happening. In fact, every day we are adding uh, new, we are giving the new locations uh, and it is being filled now. I think every day it has been monitored now, the pothole uh, filling. And also uh, the um, repair of roads wherever it is required also is being highlighted and we are sharing all this information to BBMP on a very regular day-to-day uh, -day basis. So now things are a little better. Uh, but only thing is uh, the uh, water logging uh, we have to see now uh, only in the month of um, March or April onwards we can see because now right now uh, rains have stopped. Uh, but once uh, uh, April onwards uh, we have to keep a very close eye on uh, these uh, water logging areas. So already we have identified and a lot of work has happened happened there and BBMP has uh, done a lot of uh, engineering interventions there. Uh, but ultimately we have to see only in the month of April.
right so i think we've taken up uh, an hour of your time thank you very much for your time sir from the hindu uh, to all the readers uh, whose questions we could not ask to mr Doc, uh, to uh, dr salim we will be passing on uh, all the questions that are very area specific they were too micro to be asked or uh, to be fit into the one hour format so we will be forwarding your questions to uh, dr salim uh, do keep uh, sending your questions in over email and uh, via Twitter. Uh, Dr. Salim, if you have any last words to uh, tell our readers. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. So.